Uh, M and M's is very important. It's not about candy. <laughs> uh, we need to uh, to have them in our life. Each one of us needs to have them in order to uh, move forward. In order to stay focused. Remember, we we must stay focused in this journey because the enemy is trying to be what get us to get our eyes off the prize, looking toward the peripheral things going on in here, things going on there. But we don't want to do that, amen. We want to keep looking at the prize, keep going on. And so, one of the things we must do first off is what make every day count. Why do we make want to make every count? Because we all have an expiration date. Yes. Yes. We'll all have an expiration date. Hebrews 9 27. Hebrews, Hebrews 9 and 27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And so we all got an expiration date. And so we need to make every day count. No matter who you are, let's try to make every day count. What do I mean by make every day count? In other words, you should have a small goal, a medium goal, and a large goal. So you do something every day to complete the goal because some of them have a habit of not completing goals. And we need to learn to complete goals. And that will help us to keep moving forward. Uh, I'll give an example of myself. Uh, one of my major goals is make sure I pray and read my Bible. And the next is to play my guitar. And then after that, there's some smaller things. Uh, sometimes I have some honeydews I need to do. I take care of those. And there are some things that I just I want to do offhand. I take care of those. In other words, I make something positive happen every day because we have an expiration date. And so we want to do all we can before that expiration date hits us. Amen? Yes. And so uh, let's go to uh, Matthew 6 and 34. <clears throat> Matthew 6 and 34 says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So what's he really telling us? What are you supposed to think about tomorrow? Tomorrow. No, he's saying don't be stressed, stressed out about tomorrow. Mm. How many times are we stressed out about tomorrow? Yeah. That's what he's saying. Right. Don't be stressed out about tomorrow because he said I must one day do this, two days do this, and the third day he would be what? Perfected. So he had those things, but he wasn't stressed out about them. That's what he's saying. Do not be stressed out about tomorrow. Just take care of what you can take care of today, and tomorrow will take care of itself. You don't need to stress out. You can think about it and, and try to get your ducks in a row, so to speak, but don't be stressed out over it. See, because that's if you're stressed out, you can't you can't make it count because you begin to uh uh go backwards and do make mistakes and all of this. And so remember, stress is a big enemy of ours. It's a big, big enemy. And so he's saying, take no thought for tomorrow. Don't be stressed out about tomorrow. Just take care today. And if you got some things you want to think about, that's okay. How many see that? Yes, amen. All right, let's go to uh, Psalms 90 and 12. Psalms 90 and 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. See, we need to, we need to say, look, I ain't got but a few days here. I got to make every day count. Yeah. See, but we need to punch our ticket, find as we had last night, find our little niche, punch our ticket, stay on the right frequency, yep. keep moving on because we got a expiration date and we want to do all that we can for each other, for ourselves, for our families and, and for Yahweh and to push the name up, to keep the name up. Amen. We And so our days are numbered. And so that's why we work on it. 
First Peter uh, 5, 6 through 10. First Peter 5, 6 through 10. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yahweh, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a, war a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in, the, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. The Elohim of all favor, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Messiah Yahushua, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So no matter what's going on in our life, we got to make every day count. Do something positive. Like I said, you have a small goal, a medium goal, and a large goal. We need to be goal-oriented so that we don't uh, uh, start something and before we know it, we don't end it. And so that, that's a bad sign to start something and don't finish it. And so I, when I do something, I like to start it and finish it. It's like when I uh, wanted to be a ham operator, I didn't start and finish it. I mean, I didn't start and stop. I started and finished it. And I don't not only finished it, I got the highest class of license there are. Yeah. See, that's what I do. When, I, when I'm out there, I take a dive because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it to the top. I'm trying to give it my best. And that relates to everything you do in your life. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. We need to have that pattern because when we start and stop, that, that herky jersey motion, it works in other places in your life if you don't learn to stop it. And so, uh, and another thing, we have an enemy out there. And he's looking for us when we just, there's an old saying, I don't know, I don't think it's good, but the eye of mine is a what? Yeah, Devil's yeah, workshop. Okay. So that's why we need to make something positive, something good, something told happen every day that we possibly can. I know every day we don't feel so great. I, 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 I'm 72 and I feel like that, but I still try to do something every day. Whether it's a small thing, whether it's a medium thing or a large thing, do something. What's tomorrow? Gone. Can't yeah. do nothing about it. See? Well, excuse me, yesterday is gone. Yeah. And tomorrow's ahead of us, and we can't do nothing about tomorrow until mm. we get there. And so yesterday is already gone. So there's nothing I can do about that. And so I can't do anything about the yesterday. I can't do anything about tomorrow. So I have to make today count. Because this is the day Yahoo has made. I will rejoice and be glad there. And so let's make every day count. Do something. Whether it's small, medium, or large. You know, we all got something we want to do. Uh, I'm going to start working on my guitars again, getting them all back into shape because there's kind of all over here and all over there. But that's one of my uh, goals to start working on. So it's cool off just a little bit more. I'm going to get back in there and start working on it because I want them to see any guitar I pick up works and works right, works good. See? That's not a big uh, uh, undertaking. It's a medium thing, but still, that's one of the things I want to do. And so each one of us, whatever you your niche is, you need to make every day count. If you're a helper, do something to help. Amen? Yeah. So let's make every day count. Let's go to uh, Acts 17.26. Acts 17 and 26 says, And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their ha uh, habitation. See, so we have an expiration date. We can only go so far, then it's over with. So let's do all we can before it's over with. Amen? Amen. See, let's, let's leave a good legacy if we've done very well. We, we were goal-oriented. We set goals and we completed goals. We completed this, completed that. And remember, it can be a small goal, a medium goal, or a large goal. As long as we're doing something. Don't just sit there and, and twiddle your thumbs. A lot of people just don't do nothing. And remember, here's something you need to remember. Everybody look at me. What you don't use, you lose. I'll say it again. What you don't use, you lose. So let's find something we can do with our niche, our talents, 
every day. I know you don't feel great every day, but let's, let's work at it anyway. And practice makes what? Perfect. Perfect. And so every day we're striving in something. May not be much to somebody else, but sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah. You know, you can have a goal of telling everybody, I love and appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Just walk around and say, I love and appreciate you. That's a goal. Great. It's not much, but that's a goal. That's something that you can complete. See, and that's the whole history of things is completing things. That's what causes us to be successful and to move forward in our journey is to complete something. Don't start in the stop. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. That herpy jerky motion. That gets us nowhere. Gets us confused and, and people look at you and say, nah, I don't want to go with them because it starts to start But once they see that we can complete things, they say, mm, yeah, I'm interested. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Luke. 12, 16 through 20. This is about the guy that built the barn and he thought tomorrow was promised to him. Guess what? Yeah, I'm not. 12, starting in 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will put uh, pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But Yahweh said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So what should he should he have said? Let's go to James 4, 13 through 15. <clears throat> James 4, 13 through 15. Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow will we go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If Yahweh will, we shall live and do this or that. See. If y'all will be willing, we'll do it. And we are, most of us are pretty good about that because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But we say, if y'all will be willing, we'll do such and such. So, he was a guy. He thought, I'll tear down my bones because my my own flesh has done it for me. And and I'm going to tell my soul to take it in. And I'm going to get me a little something and do a little something. But he didn't know his soul was required of him that night. See? And so that's why we make it. Every day count. Now, another reason why we make every day count because when Yahushua come back, he said, "My reward is with me to give to every man according to his works." How many see that? So that's why we want to do something every day, whether it's small, medium, or large. Just find something you can do. Like I say, if it's nothing but tell somebody, "I love, appreciate you." See, you have completed a goal. We got to get more goal oriented to this herky jerky motion. And so we got to make every day count. All right. The next MM is make every person count. Because we got some people that are wasting our time. They're called busybodies and and all this, they just waste your time. See, we got to set them people aside because we don't have time to waste. We got we got to be, like Yahushua said, we got to be about the master's business. James 1, 5 through 8. James 1, starting in 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Yahweh that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of Yahweh. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Say, stay away from them wishy-washy folks. Yes, me. They're just eating up your time. You're wasting your time. 
and your breath and your energy. And they, are, they have no intention of doing any better. None. So we have to make every person in our life count. You want people that are going in the same direction you're going. You want people that love the master and his son. Amen? Amen. See, because there's so many people out there that they just waste your time. And uh, look what the Apostle Paul had to deal with. Acts 18, 5 through 6. Acts 18, 5 and 6. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was blessed <clears throat> in the spirit and testified to the Yehudim that Yahushua was the Messiah. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I'm clean. From henceforth, I will go into the Gentiles. See, because Paul figured out, these people are just wasting my time. They're not going to change. He said, I'll go to, to the Goyim, to the Gentiles, because they will accept it. I'm tired of being with these people who's just wasting my time. See, there's a lot of people there that just want to waste your time. In fact, Yahushua said, when you go into the city and you give them your peace and they don't accept it, well, shake it. Shake your, shake dust it off, off your feet and go somewhere else. Do not waste your time. You See, you can't make somebody believe this. I'll say it again. You can't make somebody believe this. They have to be willing and open. So if they're not willing and open, you're wasting your time. You could be helping somebody that really wants this. So let's remember <clears throat> that. We don't want people that are, that are slowful, lazy. See? Lazy people, look, they, you don't want to see the thing was whoever you join, that's what part you're going to become. If you join lazy people, guess what you're going to be? Lazy. lazy. So, so make every person that you're dealing with as, as much as lies into you possible. <laughs> Little people, people with all, man, all but, man, but make every person, especially the ones that are close to you, make sure they count, make sure they're in the same direction you're going. Make sure they want to do something and not looking for handouts. Some people are just looking for handouts. We got a couple of generations. All they look for is handouts. I don't want to be around those kind. See? Because the person that's handing it out to you, you can do what? Control you. Take it away. And that's what they don't realize. The government is good at that. They control who comes to your house, how long they can stay, how much you pay, and yada, yada, yada. I can vouch for that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, so. I can even stay in my own house. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So we got to make every person count in our journey so that we are not wasting our time. Uh, the scripture talks about, uh, find that, I forget what it's called, uh, to him that is a brother to a great waster. In other words, they're just wasting your time. They're not doing anything special. They're just wasting your time. They act like they, they act like they Okay. <clears throat> Proverbs 18 and 9 says, he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. See, lazy and wasteful. We don't want to be with that kind of people. Remember, it's who you run with. It's what you become. So let's don't be in that crowd. Let's, let's make every person in our journey count. Because there's a lot of people. In fact, they just want to waste your time so you can't keep it running. They want to waste your time so you can't grow. Okay. When I find that out, I'm gone. I try to be nice about it, but uh, sometimes I ain't. <laughs> you know. Look at Peter. What was he doing? He was there was a time he was wasting the master's time, telling him, "No, you ain't going to the state. That's wasting the master's time." And he's like, "Get behind me, see? You, you, here you are wasting my time." See, there are people that just want to draw you back, especially them people that used to know you. I used to know you when. When you did this, when you did that, but you know what you need to tell them. How do you see me now? 
<laughs> That's what you need to say. Well, how do you see me now? I know what you see me back then, but how do you see me now? In other words, make every person in your journey count because people, <clears throat> somebody's wasting your time. That's time you could be doing something good for the master. See, don't let them waste your time. There's so many people. All they want to do is drag you down. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 22 and 3. <clears throat> Proverbs 22 and 3 says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. See, be prudent. Don't, don't hang around with that bunch. This simple means uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's them low information folks. <laughs> <laughs> don't hang around with those folks. See? And so we need to be prudent to see the evil and go around where the, the low information folks, they just run straight on into it. So you don't need to be with that bunch. Amen? Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 10, 18. Ecclesiastes 10 and uh, 15. 18. 18. 10, 18. And 18. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. See, we don't want to be around them kind of folks. They lazy, they don't want to do nothing, they ain't going to work, they, don't, they ain't got no goals, they ain't got no vision or nothing. Those are the people you do not want to waste your time with because you wind up like them. What is the old saying? Misery loves what? Company. Company. <clears throat> and so now they're going to pull you down. In most cases, the weak will always pull down the strong, like 90-some percent of the time. Not always, but like 90-some percent of the time, the weak is going to pull down the strong. So don't go around those weak people that, are, that they have no idea what life is about. They don't want to know. See, and that's so sad. You go around people, don't, they don't want to know nothing. That's not the kind of person you want to be with. And so we got to make every person in our life count. See? Especially the ones that are around us, most of all. Make sure they count. Make sure they're not uh, slipping and sliding and faking and jiving and all of that. See, well, some people look messianic, <laughs> but they sure ain't. <clears throat> That's the truth. They, they have the looks. They even have the jargon. But are they really walking? See? They can talk it, but they don't walk it. That's, those are the people we really got to watch out for. See? Absolutely. They, they know the terms. They know the terminology. But when it comes to keeping the feast, we're there. They come to put on the Z jeans, keep your head covered and your beard and the ladies covered and 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 and, and properly dressed where they at. They do one thing in front of you, and when they get out of sight, they do something else. See, we don't want to be around those type of people. Not at all. See, and that will help us to keep our eyes on the prize, and we will find our niche and we'll be at the right frequency. And the Father will help lead and guide us to all truths that we have need of, simply making every person count. You don't want to be around a slothful, wasteful person. No. Not at all. All right. Now we need to make every dollar count. How many know that? Because yeah. uh, uh, used to, you could go to the grocery store and for $35, you had a uh, whole wagon full of stuff. Mm -hmm. whole, yeah. uh, 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 cart full of stuff. Now you can put it in half a sack. <laughs> you probably just carry it out your hand. <laughs> See? So now we got to make every dollar count. Because again, a social person will, will come to poverty. See? And remember, how many of what ROI is? Turn on so we got to make every dollar count. I know that sometimes you do things that don't work out. That's fine. As long as you have the thought 
and the mind of, look, I got to make every dollar count. But you, you know, I can make everything work. But we have to have that mindset. Amen. Amen. Even the best of investors have lost money, but if there's their mindset to win some up, see. So that's what we need to do is because he's 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 giving us talents. Remember, he required of that guy that had the one talent. He went and hid his. So let's make every dollar count. Let's do things wisely. And another thing we can do, we have the, the tools, uh, uh, we can gurgle it, find the information and information and information. And uh, I'll give you Tammy, for example. She wore me out. <laughs> she got mad at M-A-B at me. Because I told her what kind of clock to get and she didn't want that clock. And two months later, she uh, I think it was about uh, 11.59 <laughs> on the day she hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> I think she won back the number. <laughs> and so she finally got a card. See. But she did her did her background check and she checked this and checked that. That's what I mean by making every dollar count. When we buy something, let's make sure we're buying the best that our money can buy. Mm -hmm. How many see that? Yeah, so do your background work. Just don't take somebody's word for it. You do it. See. So many people don't want to do that. They want everything handed to you. This handed to society, they got total control over. They can they can uh, manipulate them any kind of way they want to. But they don't they don't look underneath and see, let me see what's under this. Okay. So let's make every dollar pack count. Uh, let's go uh Proverbs 37 and 16. Uh, Psalms, excuse me, Psalms 3716. I'm looking at it wrong. Sister Gabriella said that she always contacts your wife to make sure everything's good for she buys it. That's what I mean. Do your homework. <laughs> well, if you know somebody that's an expert in a thing, don't mind calling them up. When I need something in chain, no, no. You think I'm like, you think I'm on shut down? Ah, I can't call one. too much pride. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm calling. <clears throat> and Tammy, she's great. Just like the day she we was going to get some uh, handy wipes. And she's seen a special word there. <laughs> and she said, oh, oh. She walked out the store and didn't buy them. But she found out later that they were all right. Yes, they were vegan. See? So, do your homework. Make every dollar count. Because what if she'd bought them and, and had Lord in them? Now we got some stuff we spent money. Mm -hmm. Got to throw them in the trash. Mm -hmm. So did we make our dollar count? Yeah. You know, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you got to have money, many, many. But whatever you do have, make it count. All right. Psalms 37, 16 says, A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. See, so... We don't have to have everything, but just what we do have, make it count. Be like the little widow woman. She didn't have but a handful of meal, a cruise of oil, and two sticks, but she made it count. Look what happened to it for three and a half years. That was a good deal. Would you call that a good investment? Yeah. No, it was a super good investment. <laughs> I, I call that a... Who would say that was prudent? Very prudent. That's one of them... Uh, 50,000% investments and boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, sometimes it's not much. Look at the little widow. She had enough of a little widow. She had what? Two mites. Two mites. But she invested. She made her two mites count. Mm -hmm. And the master said, look at all these. Pointing all this big money. Mm -hmm. But this little lady over here goes down better than they. Because she did it from her heart. They were trying to show off. But she was making every, every in this case, penny count. <laughs> mm -hmm. See? And I'm not talking about you have to have all this. But whatever you do have, make it count. Mm -hmm. Research things. Look at things. Don't just take it for uh, what you see. Look underneath and say, let me see. See? 
read some of the reviews. You know, I mean, Miss Tamara wore me out with them reviews. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking, oh, man. That must have been what happened. She got you tired of them and then started calling me about it. <laughs> And she got tired of you and she started on me. <laughs> I got tired. you. Yeah, I told you I did. See, us men, here's one thing about us men. Us men, we make decisions. We ain't short on that. We will bam. But ladies, they have to go over and over. Finally, she got a um uh Mobility, uh, hot rod today, <laughs> and we got. Uh, I said most most of y'all pictures that were going up and down the ramp and coming back up with a dog in her hand. She's smiling and going <laughs> on. See, she made her dollars count. That's what I mean. Make every dollar count. You don't have to be uh, this guy or a billionaire, but what you do have, make it count. Don't just waste your money. Some people throw money or just throw a burning thought and they like throwing it in the fire because they don't research things. See, we have the tools now. You can research things. Amen? Amen. Make, say that again? She said absolutely. Yeah. And here's another thing. Sometimes we may uh, get riches, but this is, listen to what the scripture says. Psalm 62.10. Psalm 62 and 10 says, Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Why? It's temporary. <clears throat> it's temporary. And what else? Money is only a tool. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's a tool to get you to an end. Because another scripture says, don't you know uh, riches take wings and fly away? How many billionaires you see in prison today ain't got a dime? I mean, they were billionaires. And I'm talking about in 2024. Money's gone because now they're sitting in the penitentiary. See? So let's make every dollar count. All right. And that's uh, Proverbs 23 and 5. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. See, so you, well, if, when you got them, use them as a tool. See? Well, remember, money is a tool. Use it as such. Some people think their money is them, but no. It's simply a tool that the Father has given us to do this, do that, to do good things with. To do awesome things. Chris did an awesome thing today. Yes. You got us a new uh, uh, passport. That's awesome. See, making dollars count. And I was so proud of him. I gave him the eye. I think I hugged him harder than you hugged me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that's something, too. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. See, make every dollar count. Do your best, do your research. No matter what you're buying, do your research. Even if it's water, uh, Tammy won't let me. She can we go to Sam? Uh uh. <laughs> she said, We can get this right now. Because we, we usually get that other water that ain't got the uh, what in it? Uh, bacon soda. Bacon soda. And that's what I usually get. She said, No, we can drink this right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, See, like making concept. dollars count. Make things count. See, and then when we do that, guess what the father's going to do? Give us more. Because what did he say? If you be faithful over a few things, over a few things I'll, make you I'll make you ruler over many. Mm -hmm. So the whole, the, the biggest test is in those little things. What do you do when you need $10? You use it wisely. That's that's where he's looking. He's looking. How do you handle the small thing? See, because we're creatures of habit. And if you don't handle the small things, well, he's not gonna give you something big. You would need. See, so look at the prodigal son. Where he wound up? He didn't handle his money right, did he? No. See what happened to him? Not with right clearly. Wind up in the pig pen. So we got to learn to make every dollar count. 
whatever it is. You may not have a $15, $100, whatever you fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Just make it count. Do your research and, <clears throat> and get the best price you can. And here's the difference. Here's something uh, I keep telling Tammy we need to say. Some people say, what does it cost? What does yeah. that mean? Price. Huh? The price. What, See, what there's the, the, the wording we need to use is, is different. When I say, what does it cost? That means, I don't know if I can afford it. So what should I say? What Where is your board? what is no? What is your price? And that tells the other person. Look, I'm looking somewhere else too. So you tell me what your price is. See, I walked into the place today. I asked them, "What's your price on your wood?" That lets them know that hey, I'm, I've done my research. See, I called Rose and found out their price. And when I went to the other place. I knew their price. I knew what the price was, see? And I asked them, what's their price? I didn't say, how much did it cost? How much did it cost means, I don't know if I can afford it. But what's the price means, I've done my research. And yet, I'm looking for the best price. How many see that? Make every dollar count. Uh, Proverbs 10 and 4. Proverbs 10 and 4 says, Cometh poor that dealeth the slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. See, just because you ain't got a little bit, take care of a little bit because that's, that's, that's what the father is watching. What do you do with a little bit? If I take care of a little bit, he's going to increase <clears throat> because he see, I have a pattern. I have a habit of taking care of this little thing. So when he gives me something bigger, I'll take care of it too. Yes. See? So that's very important in this journey. Make every dollar count. Do your research. Find the best price that you can. Sometimes we, we, we do the best and still, sometimes we miss the mark on it, but we, at least we did our homework. See? Mm -hmm. Do your homework when you go to buy something and ask them, what's your price? Don't say what's it cost because they're going to say, mm -hmm. I think I might have somebody here. If I ask what's their price, they know they know I've done my research. I know I know what the price of this is, and I know what the price of that is. I'm gonna see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And so we have these M and M's <laughs> to help us make every day count, make every person count, make every dollar count. Now we have one more. Make every action count. And some will say, well, that doesn't work with the others. No, not exactly. Because life has a way of uh, throwing different things at us that's not in our goal set, correct? But still yet, it's an action. So we got to make every action count. And sometimes we're thrown in the midst of things and we've got to do our thinking to make this action uh, work. Because by him... Are our actions weighed? He's looking at our actions, so we got to make our actions count. That's why he said, uh, You'll know a tree by the fruit or by the action it puts forth. See? And so that's why we have to make every action because some things are just thrown in their own, and, 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 and we got to uh, do our best to make it count. Amen. Make good decisions. I didn't see that. Uh -huh. Let's go to that first Samuel two and three. First Samuel two and three says, <clears throat> Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For Yahweh is an L of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. See? So we need to make our actions count, because that's what he's looking at. Yahushua said, Behold, I come quickly. And my what? The Lord is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Or his actions has done. See, there's old saying, actions speak louder. Remember, what you do is the real you. And that's why the Father's gauging things. But I can, I, I can come up with a whole lot of game that I'm not really doing. And that's why he said these words. They honor me with their lips, but their heart or their actions, the 
whole lot different. See, we can say we're messianic and we're walking this journey. But what do we do when we ain't in front of nobody? Mm -hmm. It's called mm -hmm. character. See, that's what we need to work on our actions. When nobody's watching, he is. Uh, Second Chronicles 16 and 9 says his eyes run what? To and fro in the whole earth. So, Second Chronicles 16 and 9 says, For the eyes of Yahweh run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. See, he's looking. And uh, the scripture says in the books were open. And what was written in the book? Who put who, who wrote on the pages? Those people did. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they can't remember the, the man that, that was uh, the king come in to see the guest. Yeah. And he says, Friend, how come you send me without a wedding, wedding garment? Speechless. And he was what? Speechless. Speechless. Because his actions were bad. He was judged on that one action. So you see how important your actions are? That one thing. And that and another thing that shows you how important clothes is. <laughs> he didn't have the right clothes on and it just because he didn't have on the right clothes. Mm -hmm. Even Paul couldn't recognize the high priest because he didn't That's have right. on the right clothes. Right clothes. Clothes are very important. And so let's make Every action count. I want to be like that guy walking there, and his action said, "Well, I'm, I made it this far," but his actions said, "No, you need to be kicked out." Hmm. And the king said, "Bang, yeah. hand and foot." You can't sit out of Congress. Why? Simply because his action said different from what he was trying to portray. Hmm. So you can't fool the op. We might think we can. Let's go to Hebrews 4 and 12. <clears throat> Hebrews 4 and 12 says, For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See how deep you can get? Mm -hmm. In one case, he said, before you call, I think it's Jeremiah, oh, he said, before you call, oh, yeah. I'll answer. See, that's why our actions are so important in this journey. And, and sure, we're not all perfect, so we, we know what to do when we mess up, amen? Yeah, yeah. Run to the blood of Mashiach, confess it, run to the blood of the land, Mashiach. And get back on our journey again. It's just that simple. But our actions, see, I don't care what you tell me. I'm looking at your actions. Because mm -hmm. that's the real view. What you let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter eleven, I think it's verse two or three. Which is uh he had a, uh, how to judge. He had quick three, uh, quick understanding. Yeah, all of that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, okay. two and three. Okay. And four. <laughs> Isaiah 11, 2 through 4. And the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yahweh. And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of Yahweh. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. See, he said he's gonna, not going to be looking at it with his eye or with his ear. But some people are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they got game for you. Some people, mouth is smooth as oil. I mean, they, they, <laughs> they can talk. <laughs> Look at the world. They're making them believe anything. Why? Because they have not a love for the truth. I'm so happy we have a love for the truth. Amen. See? And it keeps giving us more truth and more truth. 
but not worthy of it. I'm sure we're glad he'd be giving it to us Ooh, because we need him in these last and evil days. Bro, it's getting darker and darker. And as long as we love the truth, we're going to shine brighter and brighter. And I'm mad we're going to make our actions count because we have this, the house rules, to lead us in our actions. See, that's why one of the first things a uh, rogue uh, nation wants to do is get rid of this book. That's one of the first things we're going to do. Because this tells us how to treat one another, how to treat our fellow man, what pleases the Father, what he's looking for in each one of us. See, he's looking. Did you hear Hebrews? He said, the intent of the heart. He's looking to see what is your intent. And your actions tell you what your intent was. You say, uh, like the uh, the, the guy said, I'll go. He didn't. But he didn't go. What his actions say? He was lying to truth with me. <laughs> the other guy said, I won't go. He did. But he did. See? So, see how the actions define who they were. Our actions define who we are. And so we make, need to make our actions count. I know we miss the mark sometimes. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about on a regular basis, making it a habit. See, you know something so powerful about habit? It'll take you places talent won't. Look at the disciples. They weren't so talented, but they had a habit of doing what the master said. Now look at them. They're sitting on 12 throne. See, remember, if we make things have a habit, we don't have to think about it. It's uh, second nature. It's automatic. See? You need to make it a habit of making good action. Therefore, we don't have to think about it. We just do it because we know it's in the book. If it says love your neighbor, that's what we do. But we really <clears> love as <throat> what? <laughs> so tonight we uh, looked at uh, the M and M's, the four M's. Make every day count. Make every person count. Because there are people that just waste your time, and some of them are just wild now. You know. Watch them live, my folk. It's just about wasting your time. Because they live. And then we got to make every dollar count. You may not have a million dollars, but what you do have, make it count. Do your research. Get the best price that you can possibly get. And remember, ask them, what's your price? That tells them, I've done my research. I don't know what it should cost. Not, uh, I don't know if I can afford it or not. And again, we need to make every action count. So this is my little story on the M and M's because uh, very important in this journey to do these things every day. Do something that's positive, that's good, whether it's be small, medium, or large. See, just do something. Don't let life pass you by and one day you wake up and wonder, well, how did I get here? Because hmm. well, you didn't do that. Didn't. See? That's what we don't want to happen. We want, don't want this to happen to us. Because remember, ROI is facing us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether you like ROI is facing us, he, he's going to require it because he's going to say, look, I gave you the rule book. I gave you the house rules. So don't tell me, don't see it. And there are people that love to make excuse and come up with I can't. It ain't going to work when you come, come the day we stand for you. Mm -hmm. It won't work. I, I'm working on a song. Excuses, excuses. One day they're going to become useless. Mm -hmm. Just like the guy that was, went to the wedding party. Speechless. Excuse done no good. So let's work on the four M's. Make every day count. Make every person count. Make every dollar count. And make every action count. Because that helps us to be a better Talmud disciple of Yahushua. Mm -hmm. Abba, we love and appreciate you. Appreciate your son, Yahushua. Appreciate all those that are
have been with us and enjoying the good fellowship and good food. And uh, we just thank all those that are kicking in and doing their part. They found a niche in the family that they're doing their part. And we just appreciate it and love them for it. Hashem Yahushua, amen. amen. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Yeah, hold it up so they can see it.